interactive. Well, I guess most of the day's been pretty interactive. But that's a tough haul after lunch. And it's still after lunch, <laughs> last time I checked. So uh, we're going to make this uh, painless and interesting, but we won't drag it on too long. But we do have some goals here with outreach. And we want you to be able to walk away understanding very clearly what outreach means to you and what outreach means to Auburn University. And then we want to take a look at your outreach contributions and give you an opportunity to actually delineate those before you leave and have some discussion around that. And then to help you begin to formulate your outreach philosophy. Even though you were not instructed to bring your laptops, we'll have you just do a wee bit of writing. Not as much as we would have if you had had your laptops. But that doesn't mean don't bring them next time and then you won't have to do it. <laughs> but uh, we would like you to walk away with a beginning to what you are doing. The essence of our heritage is that we are attentive and responsive to the needs of the constituents we serve. As I have noted before, however, our responsiveness must not be constrained by a narrow definition of the land-grant mission. Rather, we must inquire what it is that this institution should be and must be now and in the future if we are to fulfill our role in service to society. So says the 15th president of Auburn University, William Hughes. Okay. We're gonna begin with talking about what outreach means to you. Once again on your table you have index cards I believe placed by Raj. <laughs> On those index cards, I would like you to individually write either a definition or a description of what outreach means to you. When everyone is done writing their definition or description, and this should take you about a minute or two, you're gonna randomly redistribute the cards at your table and then read them aloud. So you wanna try to write it so it can be read by someone else. Yeah. <laughs> table has completed the first part. Just pass the cards around and begin reading them aloud. Not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Just you. <laughs> Paying back your education or service, et cetera, the community, Sweet. The community yeah. that yeah. has formed your knowledge and professional yeah. growth um, broadly says, defined. I'll reach out to you to share your right? yeah. community. Communities. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Somebody else to yeah, okay. Outreach is uh, producing instruction or experiences to other populations that will not get. 
care. Makes sense. Uh, and it says using your teaching research skills and knowledge to benefit the general public or a specific group of people outside the university. <laughs> so it says uh, reach out to people and educate them. Serving or providing information to the community of people outside of the <laughs> what we would like to do for the next few minutes is we want to hear some of the, the gems from your table. Be they bright gems or not so bright gems. <laughs> Ours, our favorite one uh, says serving the local, national, or international public with our expertise. Oh, yeah. Serving the national or international public with our expertise. Another? Was there another good oh, one from this table? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Free. Yeah, free is an emphasis that we talked about, usually for free. For yeah. free. Yeah. Okay. All right. Their emphasis, is, their emphasis was on national and international and the service being free. How about this table in the back? Can I just add to something? That? Sure. She wants that Paris outreach. <laughs> they need a lot of help over there. <laughs> well, like really narrow and really broad. No, well, not necessarily. I mean, in CMT, they have all sorts of different scopes. So yeah. one a really great recruiting tool that they use is to have this World Affairs Seminar mm -hmm. that's held here. So it's like a United Nations type experience for them. So it's really broad. But, but, I'm not but saying you know, all, the other thing. all I'm these saying students come the around one, from the ones you see on like the Take Five and the well, yeah, vaccines but. and all that. They're either in third world countries or they're 10 miles down. So I, I think what she's, <laughs> perhaps what you're saying is that the, the university really encourages yeah. outreach cool. that is close, yeah. but if you're choosing to go like to perhaps Palm Springs or Hollywood or Miami yeah. Beach, yeah. yeah, they're not really up on that. <laughs> it's a good question. It's a, it's a good question. What else from this table? Okay. All right. This table. Uh, interaction with the public and effort to help them understand and support conceptually the field in which I work. Say that last part again. The last part of it. <laughs> conceptually in the field in which I work. Understand and support conceptually the field in which I work. Oh, okay. Okay. Another one from this table. Using my knowledge and skills related to my profession to serve the community. All right. What are some of the consistent strands you hear about what outreach means to you? Reaching out to people. Reaching out to people. Reaching out to people. Using the skills that the university is helping you foster. All right. The university is supporting the fostering of your skills, and you are then using them to reach out to people. Give us one more theme. To really care about tenure? Uh, yeah, right. yeah, it could be that. Or for the community. Okay. <laughs> All right, to really care about the community. In some ways, I do believe that outreach can be thought of as a spiritual notion or a spiritual extension of what you have dedicated your resources to. And if you are not spiritually inclined, it is certainly a practical extension of what you have developed. So either way you look at it, it is really an extension of you. 
in addition to everything that you have said. So often when we look at what percentage of what we are required to do is teaching, is research, is outreach, but if you take just the notion of caring, well, how much percentage of you is about caring? I can't answer that, only you can answer that, okay? Your contract can't really answer that. It can guide you, but it can't give you that answer. So as we explore today, I want you to perhaps add that to the dimension of what you're thinking about and how you're feeling when you think about outreach and what outreach means not only to your career, to you contractually, but to you as a contributing human being to society. How can outreach play into that? We are basically going to utilize three resources. And one is this handy little booklet that was developed in 2000 called University Outreach. And this is uh, for and about Auburn University. How many of you have ever seen this booklet before? All right, we've got many copies of it in the Big Yo Center that you are welcome to have. have. <laughs> I didn't know how to end that sentence, what to tell you you could do with them. If I had known you could have them, I would have brought them for you, but uh, you can stop by the Big Yo Center and uh, pick these up. In the next thing we're going to do, you're going to take a look at a couple of the quotes from this booklet, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it in a few minutes. The other resource that we're going to use, of course, is uh, Dr. Groch's well-developed manual, and that is what we're going to use to write from. And then the third thing is uh, the faculty handbook. Now, given that I assumed you would have your computers and that you were going to be online, saving paper, I didn't make copies of what I wanted to talk to you about. However, the website you know you can find, but I want you to understand how to interact with the faculty handbook as you are trying to develop your documentation for this, because they do give you some excellent guidelines. And then this book works well with that because it fleshes out what they're talking about in the handbook. So you'll read the handbook and you'll say, well, I'm not quite sure what that means. This book gives you samples, and they're samples from Auburn University. So it's, it's a tiny bit dated, but I don't think there's a newer version of this. And as I read through it, I thought it was still perfectly applicable. Okay. All right, if you look on your table, there's a yellow sheet. And on that yellow sheet are two quotations from the orange book and a quotation from the faculty handbook. I want you to take about two minutes to read those three items. Us what outreach meant to you. I would like you to, at your table, talk about what you now believe Auburn University expects of you as a faculty member with regards to what your role in outreach is. consultation, one of them is research-generated knowledge. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I actually, um, I mean, not, not, I'm not reading after reading this, but what I want to tell you is I'm involved in this, the COSAM. Mm. Uh, we have uh, submitted a, a grant to NSF, which is on global climate. Once again, I'd like to hear back from your tables with regards to, after reading, a little more about Auburn University's expectations. What are some of the things you gleaned from it? From this paper. And how, from what's on the paper, okay. and what Auburn expects of you as compared to what you originally thought of as your role, or what you originally thought of as outreach. Oh yeah, well we yeah we talked a little bit about just that general notion of meeting a need, you know, is is falling underneath outreach, 
And then on the second description here, um, on this, actually, if you look at the text block, there's the sixth line down. It says this notion of um, focusing on persistent and difficult problems of daily, of daily life. So we really like that. We thought that was an interesting way to kind of encapsulate meeting a need and, and trying to use that perhaps as a way to navigate through um, this text here. Why did you like it? Well, for me, I thought that this, this notion of not just saying meeting a need, you know, I think that could be a little bit maybe too broad, perhaps, mm -hmm. and this idea of persistent and difficult problems. So problems that maybe are very well known within a particular region that need, that need to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. So we thought that was kind of interesting. We also thought that some of these uh, perhaps were a little bit different between the three different descriptions put, put out. And um, we, just, we, we found that that maybe gives us more of a well-rounded view of what outreach means. But it could also be perhaps a point of confusion. I don't know if other groups ran into that or not in terms of looking at the three different statements. So you're seeing that perhaps Auburn's view of your role in outreach encompasses a much broader arena for you than you thought before. That there are many more opportunities within that arena than you previously would have thought. Well, per perhaps, yeah, based on this document here. Okay. Sure. All right. You were surprised to hear distance education and outreach learning and lifelong learning. Yeah, part of the description. Okay. Is that really distance education? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh -huh. and meaning like I teach an online class and people take it. That's somehow different from regular teaching. Why did that surprise you? Because that's teaching. Because they do tuition. Yeah. So they don't pay tuition as outreach. They pay tuition as teaching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, regular tuition. Go ahead, Dr. Chaudhary. So I have to say something here. I think this document is out of date uh, because I think this that whole reason for say distance education, lifelong learning, the lifelong learning pieces. Yes, that's because of, there's something called the Office of Professional and Continuing Education. Yeah. That sits reports to the vice president for university outreach, and that's where you can offer classes to the community people. Okay, that they pay some you know small amount of tuition for, and um, the office of distance learning used to also report to university outreach mm -hmm. until the previous provost gave it to the Biggio Center. So now distance education is actually under the Biggio Center. So maybe that distance oh, education doesn't quite hold anymore. So I think. Mm -hmm. Administrative things have moved a little bit ahead of some policy documents. Well, I can think of a project that I'm working on that's going to involve distance education. And currently, there is no charging fee attached to that as an initial component. It doesn't mean that outreach projects can't have distance education. It means that distance education is not outreach. Right. It's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That in and of itself does not make it outreach. Well understood. Jay, you were going to say something? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. More? Comments? But they um, have decided to um, not have a separate outreach percentage. It okay. is um, outreach goes in now every single component. Mm. So you can't. So you're so saying about outreach. Right. Slash outreach. Yes. Mm -hmm. huh. So it's a different. I don't know if other colleges are going to do that. But That's an interesting way of thinking about it because it expands this thing, this idea that you take what you're doing as a faculty member out. Mm -hmm. So it's saying take every single aspect of what you do out. And just to add, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Just to add, um, I work for community planning, and our objective is to improve communities. So most, <laughs> most of the research that we write or grants that we write are around community development. 
economic development, it could be social development. Mm -hmm. So that's there's a research component but it has a direct impact on community. Mm -hmm. So this is one dilemma we had as department whether we should account as research or outreach. Mm -hmm. And we were said do it on both sides. I don't know whether it's I don't know how they're going to choose to count it, but I think <laughs> that this organic approach would have taken care of that. And I think if you look at the first line from President Muse where he says, conceptually, outreach is instruction, mm -hmm. or outreach is research, or it's instruction in research. And I believe that what they are doing in the College of Liberal Arts speaks to the spirit of how some have defined or intended Auburn to approach the whole notion of outreach. But once again, it has been in many ways left to the individual colleges as to how they will continue to sparse that about. And so then it becomes incumbent upon you to try to figure that out versus what you want and need to do versus what you are reading and uh, I'm just so glad it's all perfectly clear to you now. <laughs> we can just take this topic off the table. <laughs> Let's take a, just a quick gander at some of the Auburn outreach initiatives. And how do you see any of those aligning with anything that you have read and anything that you thought? Okay. Anything else you notice? Well, it's the idea of service. Okay. What does this indicate? Money. Meaning? We can get paid. Support. Financial support for your outreach, not just saying go do outreach. There are measures of support that are even outside of your particular school. What does this one tell you? Okay, so there's something supportive foundationally about your efforts to do outreach and that there are grants available and that they do encompass some type of award ceremony where you're given actual awards and recognition for having done outreach. And your points about the uh, international and the local are well taken. However, I would venture to say within some of these awards you'll see uh, projects that uh, were given grants and were awarded that were national projects. Okay, so we've been engaged in, in all of those. But I couldn't stand here and tell you that I was an authority on whether they favor reaching far out or far in, but I, I, I do see the, the handwriting. A little bit about what is in this book that you might want to pay some attention to if you can grab it online or either pick up a copy is they provide you with a matrix that really tends to scholarly contributions and examples of what that looks like in outreach. And that is very helpful in documentation of your scholarship specifically in the area of outreach. So that's something that you will want to take a look at. The second appendix gives you criteria for assessing outreach. It tends to be one of those things that we don't get a lot of instruction on and so we're not really sure about what to do with it unless it, it is a really strong component in our colleges and, and we've got that example for us. So this is provided there. And the third set of resources are specific examples of how Someone in, let's say, chemistry and biochemistry. Excellent. Hold it up for him to see. It is online, by the way. Excellent. 
So it gives you specific examples of how you would develop an outline documenting and describing your research, or, I'm sorry, your outreach in that particular area and how you would carry it all the way through. So great resource, it's online, no reason that you don't tap into that resource. Now, when someone says, well, my outreach is only a half a percent of my contract, I'm not quite sure why I would want to engage that much in it. It's just one more add-on. It's going to take away time uh, that I should be devoting to something else. One of the keys to looking at outreach is making sure that your outreach is connected. Connected to your teaching, connected to your research. Connected to anything that you are able to connect it with that has to do with your purpose here. Can anyone give me an example of having connected their outreach to either their teaching or their research? Nathan? Service learning, you know, so perhaps taking a class out to do some water quality testing. Okay. Seeing, you know, what's going on, what kind of contaminants are being dumped into the local watershed and then utilizing that as a point to actually build your research up a little bit, you know, get the students out into the community, and then also uh, it's something that can make the class a little bit more interesting and exciting. Okay. So you want to have another example? I say I feel like mine's just part of my job anyway because uh, at the vet school it's very much built in that we consult with referring veterinarians, local veterinarians every mm -hmm. day that we're on clinics pretty much as well as it's expected of us to give continuing education seminars to local veterinarians, national presentations, whatever. And it's usually in an area that you have an interest in, usually your research interest. So if I'm speaking nationally at a CE meeting, not necessarily presenting an abstract, but I'm speaking on a topic, mm -hmm. it's typically also related to my research and presenting some of my data sort of in previous studies, et cetera, at the same time. Okay. So, Good. Any others? I've had an interesting opportunity over the past, I guess, couple of years to experiment with tying these multiple facets together. I got the opportunity to go to South Africa and uh, begin some research on the education system. From that, I was able to write a chapter about uh, South Africa's uh, education system and how it impacted their national economy and what component was lacking, uh, specifically a preparing future faculty component like we have here at Auburn in their system. Was able to then return to South Africa with that research, show it to the powers that be at a particular university to garner their interest in a preparing future faculty program. On this end at Auburn University, I was able to come back and we were able to have a discussion amongst the Big EO Center and talk about what we could do to meet that need. Do you see these things all tying up together? Then to further that, or this has culminated in something that was somewhat unexpected but was an opportunity that presented itself, um, I got named to the Fulbright specialist roster, which is going to give me a chance to take all of this information back to South Africa again and help them start a preparing future faculty program that will link in with Auburn's program that will give our students a chance to have some interaction with their students. Okay. One theme, multiple entities so that you're not running all over the place trying to engage in 20 different concepts. I had a couple of other things that were thrown into that same second trip, but that was just one example of how things can be tied together. Okay. I want you to think about 
how you can take any research activity you have and how you can get that to not only benefit others, but how you can get it to benefit you and perhaps grow into some larger vision that is somewhere in the recesses of your mind. Does the question make sense to you? It's an open discussion. Yeah. Well, I think in terms of getting funding, you know, to do whatever research you want to do, if you can put something on there that shows that there's a need in the community, whoever it is that you're submitting to is going to like that a lot. Say, hey, there's this need. Um, I, I'm involved in one of these uh, grants, which uh, COSAM, under COSAM, mm -hmm. uh, for a global climate change education with middle school. Mm -hmm. Rod is also involved in. Um, and what I'm thinking now, you know, listen to Dr. Rocha and everybody, if, if, so if we get the grant, if, right. so then what we can do is, I can use it, like if you have a pre-question kind of thing at the beginning of when we get the grant and we start the process, and then we have a post-question thing at the end, so we know if really we could educate these middle school students and evaluate, and that I could maybe come up with some research paper or use it in my teaching, or maybe I can join with Raj and come up with a course? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. A distance course, you mean? Distance. Mm -hmm. Like far to China and India? <laughs> 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 Not nowhere in between, but far or... Okay. All right. It, it, it's almost a systems approach to thinking when it comes to incorporating the outreach. Um, I do outreach at Love to Poke Elementary School. I do a violin class, and I also work with uh, youth orchestra, kind of kid orchestra. Mm -hmm. And the whole point eventually is to have string music education students or wind and brass or choral to actually work with those students. So it's going to become a component of the string skills class that I teach spring semester mm -hmm. to have them have actual interaction with kids playing these instruments. Okay. All right. The more you think about it, the more you get to talk about it with your colleagues, the more you start to connect the dots and see the connectivity in what you're doing, the easier it becomes to figure out how you incorporate outreach into what you are doing and how you do it successfully and how you do it in such a manner that it becomes an extension of your purpose and not just something else that you have to get done. If you would take a look at page 22 in your Grocha manual. We're just gonna engage in a couple of activities from the manual that are going to get you started. On page 22 under step one, it asks you to list your community outreach activities. I want you to just think about it and list everything that you can think of that you're engaged in that could be considered community outreach activities. And if you're sitting there thinking, but I don't do any outreach, you do something. Even if you haven't connected the dots yet. I heard someone say they went to their child's school and spoke at career day. All right, that's a beginning. Can we make one up? <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can engage in fantasy and put down what you would do if you had thought of it before today. Yes, you can. <laughs> Just utilize whatever mental resources you have to to come up with a list of community outreach activities. And when you're done with step one, I want you to move on to step two. And if you have some discipline-specific activities, so we've got someone that's in music, that's teaching violin lessons, working with the youth orchestra. 
that would be discipline specific. <laughs> happening as you make your lists. What are some of the things that you are noticing that are happening as you are creating your lists? Thoughts? <laughs> okay. What did you say? <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> now, mind you, everyone in here is exhausted from doing something, but I don't have anything. You, you all do. It's just a matter of pulling those things out. What are some of the other things that you're noticing? Yes, Nathan. We notice there's overlap between the two. So a lot of times you put it in the first one and it counts as your expertise sort of service as well. Okay. Noticing it out. Uh, uh, Overlap between steps one and two. What else are we noticing? What's that? I do more outreach than anything else. Okay. <laughs> we have a case of depression here. She does so much outreach, she's not getting tenure. <laughs> she's going to be a community activist. But hey, it qualifies you for president, so go ahead. There you go. <laughs> Okay, what you're going to be able to do with this is as you work on this list some more and as you learn to differentiate and you see the overlap and the cross sections and the connections, you will be able to articulate at least a few paragraphs regarding your outreach contributions. One of the things you're going to go back and start thinking about, and, and, and I predict some of you are going to drive away from here and think about I do that. I don't know why I didn't even think of that. That's outreach. Well, that's outreach and that's connected to my work. It's just going to start to come to you. We want you to use this to jot those ideas down so that when it is time for you to sit down and write and articulate something about what your art outreach contributions are, you don't have to come up with answers like, I don't do anything. <laughs> okay. Everyone in here does something, so you do. And we want you to be prepared for that. Your outreach philosophy. Did you want to say something, Dr. Choudhury? One quick little point. Mm -hmm. There are people in here who are, you know, probably going to do their faculty careers elsewhere than, than Auburn. That, in fact, the kind of work, especially with your connecting your, your research to, you know, the community, um, you know, you might, some of you might go to a, a different institution where it actually counts within your regular scholarship activities. Mm -hmm. Okay? Many mm -hmm. small institutions where there isn't quite as, as large a research, teaching, and outreach division, they actually will, you'll be able to spin these into other more traditional venues in terms of counting and directing mm -hmm. Or when it's some, many land grants have the outreach piece, but if you end up in a non-land grant, it doesn't mean the work goes to waste, it, it'll get categorized in other ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah? In terms of, because the three of us are actually yeah. still on the market, right, yeah. uh, how, how do things in outreach get viewed in terms of that? What was the question? Uh, because the three of us are, are kind of still on the market mm -hmm. how outreach is looked on your data as in terms of evaluating your scholarship. I would propose that it's how you frame it. And how you frame it is going to depend on which institutions you are applying to. Exactly. If you apply to an institution like what he just described, then I would frame the outreach as this this organic part of your whole package of what you're going to bring to itty bitty Idaho mm -hmm. and how that's going to help with what you know are issues that exist in itty bitty Idaho. Not 30% of my work, was, they're not interested in that. But Ohio State might be. <laughs> okay, so I. I think that's one way that you could handle that situation. Okay, an outreach philosophy and an outreach philosophy statement. Because you're here right now, let's say Auburn University, you and the larger world, and how you conceptualize that with regards to outreach. And if you wanted to think in generic terms, Academia, you and the larger world, would serve that same purpose.
take a look at page 23. Given that you haven't had a significant amount of time to lay this out in your mind, I would like you to see if you could come up with a statement sentence. Hmm. Drawing on the initial index card you wrote, the things you have written down about the outreach that you currently do. See if you can come up with one statement sentence about what you believe about outreach. This is where you steal each other's cards. Nice. <laughs> Just take the best card. Yeah. Yeah. It's our gateway sentence. Yes, thank you, Nathan. You just developed a gateway sentence. This is not your, the sum total of your philosophy, I hope. <laughs> Has everyone had a chance to share their statement sentences? Not yet. Okay. We're working on it. All right, got the Mensa table over here. <laughs> what do you have over here? Outreach is providing instruction. Okay, if we can come back together one last time on this, I want you to hear some of the different um, statements that were made and see what you notice about some of the statements. Remember, this is sort of a draft of an opening statement which then builds into paragraphs which then is completed in a page. All right? Kelly, would you give us yours? Sure. Okay. Another, please. Pet. Um, I said I kept it more specific and said outreach allows me to contribute to the veterinary community and clients by providing expertise and continuing education to general practitioners, which directly benefit the pets and clients. Okay. Get some more volunteers. Music. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, I believe, well, outreach for me is producing music, instruction, or experiences to populations that would not have the opportunity otherwise. Okay. One more volunteer. Don't let me call on you. I'll go. Okay. All right. Uh, so outreach for me, um, let's see, involves applying one's knowledge, skills, and abilities to meet a documented community need. Okay. All right. In a very short amount of time, you have gone from sort of a nebulous thought about what outreach is to claiming what it means to you. And that is the position from which you want to begin this one page essay. Not necessarily with those words, but at least with the mental vision that I am claiming this, and this is what outreach means to me. This is what outreach means as I apply my discipline and what I have put into something and what I can contribute and glean back from Alabama, the world, or however you plan to go with it. All right, if you follow the instructions as provided in that document, take a look at your faculty handbook information and take a gander at some of this information online. I think you will be in a pretty good position and you're already off to a great start with outreach, philosophy, and contributions. Okay, we're done. Thank you.